Good afternoon, respected chairpersons and delegates. We at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences conducted the world's first randomized controlled trial on prophylactic laparoscopic omentectomy at the time of CAPD catheter insertion. Now I'll be presenting the results of that study. Continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis is an effective mode of renal replacement therapy in patients with end-stage renal disease, which has definite advantages over hemodialysis. For proper peritoneal dialysis, accurate positioning in the pelvis and patency of the CAPD catheter are two very important factors. Various methods of catheter insertion have been described in the literature. However, open surgical insertion under local anesthesia is the current standard of care. However, it has a disadvantage uh, that the placement of the catheter in the pelvis is a blind technique, uh, which is particularly difficult in patients with obesity, previous laparotomy or peritoneal additions. Laparoscopic insertion has the advantage that placement in the pelvis is done under direct vision. However, it requires general anesthesia. And despite placement under direct vision, randomized trials comparing open and laparoscopic insertion have failed to show any difference in catheter survival. This could be due to the phenomenon of omental wrapping, which is the natural tendency of the omentum to wrap around any foreign body in the abdomen. Uh, in view of this, several authors have suggested prophylactic omentectomy at the time of catheter insertion to prevent this complication. If you have to do omentectomy through open technique, the, the incision required would be very long, leading to various wound-related morbidities, which can be reduced by doing it laparoscopically. However, no randomized control trial comparing laparoscopic omentectomy with the standard of care has been done till yet. So we conducted this study with the aim to evaluate whether laparoscopic peritoneal dialysis catheter insertion with or without omentectomy reduces the incidence of catheter malfunctioning. This was a three-arm randomized uh, parallel pilot control trial. And patients with end-stage renal disease uh, aged less than eight years who were referred from the nephrology department were considered for randomization. Patients who had a history of previous omentectomy and those with contraindications for laparoscopy, pregnancy, ascites, any active intra-abdominal or parietal infection, any stoma or hernia were excluded. Randomization was done using computer-generated random numbers and patients were allocated in the one is to one is to one ratio into three groups, A, B, and C. Group A was laparoscopic catheter insertion with omentectomy under general anesthesia. Group B was laparoscopic insertion without omentectomy under general anesthesia. And in group C, patients uh, comprised of patients uh, who had conventional open surgical catheter insertion under local anesthesia. No blinding techniques were applied. In the operating room, the nursing in charge opened uh, the envelopes and uh, injection cefepirazone uh, was used as surgical prophylaxis in all patients. In group C, we used a 2.5 centimeter midline incision, while in groups A and B, we used three ports placed in the flank. The intracolic omentum was lifted up and was excised uh, using harmonic. After this, a supra-umbilical choker was inserted and a double cuff straight uh, tank of catheter was used, uh, was introduced in using a railroad technique and was directed towards the pelvis of the patient. Inflow of normal saline was checked and the catheter was left in the pelvis. The specimen was uh, removed using an endo bag through a 10 mm port. Primary outcome was catheter malfunction at six weeks and three months. Malfunction was defined as presence of inflow or outflow restriction. Outflow restriction was defined as outflow time more than 30 minutes or retention of more than 30% of dialysis fluid. Secondary outcomes were defined uh, were uh, operating time and complications. Both intention to treat and per protocol analysis were done. 59 patients were considered for uh, randomization and uh, of which 14 were excluded and 45 patients were randomly allocated to three groups. In group A, two patients discontinued peritoneal dialysis. In group B, one patient was lost to follow up and in group C, one patient died at three weeks. In intention to treat analysis, these patients were considered to have catheter malfunction at six weeks and three months. Uh, while in per protocol analysis, these patients were excluded, leaving 16, 11 and 14 patients in groups A, B and C respectively for analysis. Comparison of, uh, uh, of, of demographic and clinical variables was done and uh, they were comparable in among the three groups except for um, duration of chronic kidney disease, which was significantly higher in group B. Both intention to treat and per protocol analysis failed to uh, show any difference 
any statistically significant difference among uh, the three groups uh, in terms of catheter malfunction. However, we can see that in special in per protocol analysis, uh, catheter malfunction at three months was six percent in group A and 21 percent in group C, which we consider as clinically relevant. Mean catheter survival was around 12 months in group A and about nine months in groups B and C. We did a subgroup analysis in patients who had catheter insertion for the first time. Malfunction at six weeks and three months was not found to be significantly different among the three groups. But in patients who had a previously failed catheter insertion, catheter malfunction at three months was around 8% in group A and about 50% in group C, which was clinically relevant, although not statistically significant. We also compared the outcomes of patients who had omentectomy, that is group A, uh, with those who did not have omentectomy, that is group B and C combined. And malfunction at three months uh, in patients who had omentectomy was 6% compared to 20% in those who did not have omentectomy. Uh, although this was not statistically significant, in, patient, in the subgroup of patients who had previously failed catheter insertion, uh, this uh, difference re, uh, had a trend towards statistical significance. Mean operating time was significantly higher in group A compared to groups B and C, and complications were comparable in all the three groups. So this was the first randomized controlled trial attempting to evaluate the role of prophylactic laparoscopic omentectomy on peritoneal dialysis catheter function. Uh, we had a decent follow-up of more than 90% at three months, and all patients underwent allocated treatment with no crossover. The results indicate a definite advantage of laparoscopic omentectomy, which was clinically relevant, although not statistically significant due to inadequate sample size. The biggest limitation of this study is, of course, the small sample size. We found it difficult to recruit patients because majority of patients in our setup prefer hemodialysis, which could be due to the co high cost of the peritoneal dialysis solution or uh, preference among nephrologists. Therefore, better counseling of these patients regarding the advantages of peritoneal dialysis is required, and multicenter tri uh, trials uh, can be conducted to recruit more patients. In conclusion, laparoscopic omentectomy may reduce catheter malfunction in patients with previously failed peritoneal dialysis catheter, and further high-quality trials with larger sample size are required before this can be routinely practiced. Thank you.